Hello and welcome to a brand new installment of Nintendo News Report for Wednesday, April 3rd, 2019. Um, I'm your host, Donald Terriel, and I'm lucky to have power this morning because we had the biggest windstorm since records began, which was last year when all the records got destroyed in a windstorm. Jo joining us this week is a man who just got home from Boston, and boy are his legs tired, Neil Ronahan. Hi, everybody. <laughs> they, are, they are tired. You walk a lot when you go to conventions, especially... <laughs> when you wind up like walking to the pier to get dinner several times. Because God knows the alternative at PAX is $12 burgers. I mean, like the food, $12 the, terrible burgers, the food at the Boston convention center isn't as bad as it has been in years past. It actually has like a pretty decent grilled cheese place on the premises. Oh, really? Like I overpaid for food <clears throat> when I didn't leave the convention center, but I don't, I don't think I was really that overall disappointed. Like it was, tolerable decent food that i just paid too much money for yeah and of course i get i would when i went two years ago and probably if i go next year it's like i get hit 33 percent worse anyway yeah yeah <laughs> all right the other the other man who's been th been through bosses the man who's finally seeing the sun for the first time in a long time zach miller <laughs> it's up when i wake up and it's it's up when i go to bed so we're entering that long stretch of sun now. The long, the long <clears throat> Watch me start complaining about it light. in about four months. <laughs> yeah. And and also joining us tonight, the man who is ex un ungodly excited for the fact that Stanley the Bugman is making a comeback, <laughs> Justin Berube. Yes, the uh, oddest entry in the Donkey is, Kong. Is Donkey Kong 3 good? I haven't played too much Donkey Kong 3, but I, I actually played it a little more than a week or maybe two weeks ago at an arcade and uh not too impressed but i'm willing to give it a try it's kind of weird to me because it's more of a shooter game i mean that's yeah. what Kong tried to get away from in the first place did like a, it, did miyamoto have a hand in that one or i really don't know too much about the history on that game so that could be something i'd look into a bit where's popeye just give us popeye already uh, yeah. that's in licensing hell isn't it popeye yeah. is that... public domain hmm. I again, thought, I suppose... No, I thought somebody. Uh... But I, but I think I think the the arcade game might have been tied to the movie. Maybe there it would have been around movie? the same era. Yeah, yeah the no. movie with Robin Williams. But is like the everything about Popeye public domain, or is just like the old episode? It might just be. Yeah, that's the thing. Is that I think that the arcade game might have had ties to oh. something that is copyright. Yeah, yeah it's, and it's like King. Okay, Mi Miyamoto is credited as the director of Donkey Kong Three. Huh. And I mean, was I mean the I'm sure the Popeye concept is older than 1924, but that's the that's the first year we've gotten anything into the public domain in I don't know how long. Thanks Disney. So <laughs> I do like the plot of Donkey Kong Three, as per Wikipedia, is Stanley is a bug man. <laughs> Donkey Kong has taken refuge in his greenhouse. And it is now up to Stanley to stop the ape from stirring up any more insects that will soon destroy his flowers. Stanley saves the flowers by spraying bug spray on Donkey Kong. Thanks, Wikipedia. Yeah, it's, it's a weird <laughs> game, and it is like a shooter. And isn't really so much about platforming, though you can move up and down different platforms. Yeah. Stage, but it's it's bizarre, and I don't understand why that's a Donkey Kong game. Be it, because Donkey Kong is in it, presumably. Although it was the last Donkey Kong game, I think, for a decade, until DK, the combo of DK ninety four and Country. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, um, well, well, we'll spoil one bit of news here. Uh, Donkey Kong three will be coming to Switch this Friday as part of the arcade archives from Hamster. It'll be eight bucks. And I think we've pretty much all covered that off. So. Um, <laughs> So Neil, since you're since you are the you're the least frequent guest, and you also had the most games here, uh, what are some things that you you were really in love with from PAX East? Um, so the first game, I'm actually on brand wearing a shirt, Super Crush KO, uh, which is the game from the guys who made Graceful Explosion Machine Vertex Pop. Uh, if you missed out on that game, I think it's like thirteen bucks. It's on the eShop still. It was an early uh, early Switch eShop game, I think, came out like April or May of 2017. Yeah, it was. It was about yeah, it was about two years, two almost two years ago to the yeah. day. Yeah, uh, Super Crush KO is very similar in kind of style 
and 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 gameplay as as gem but gem is a lot more of a shooter uh and this is kind of uh, in the words of the developer uh mo i forget his last name um he was very nice it was nice to meet him because I've, I've i really enjoyed his first game and i really liked the demo of his new game uh so this is kind of like a 2D character action game, and he's actually very much inspired by stuff like Bayonetta. And it kind of shows in a weird way. Like, his goal with the original gem was to make a side-scrolling shooter that felt like Bayonetta, which mm -hmm. it, it kind of feels that way. So there is, like, a scoring system, and the way that this game works is that it's a, a side-scrolling brawler where you have to kind of beat up all the enemies there, but you want to chain attacks together as quickly as possible. And you have a lot of different tools at your disposal. You have, you know, punches. So you can keep your chain going by firing off a gun that kind of has a, a limited meter for you to be able to fire bullets off. So you kind of use that to, to link attacks together. There's also a wide variety of special attacks that you can use. And it just felt really good to bounce around and use all those abilities and try to like stylishly destroy all the foes on the screen. Uh, the demo was just a, a really good kind of like top level view of it. And I um, I don't know if they've had any kind of release window. I want to say summer, uh, but that game was like one of my favorite games of PAX East, bar none. Uh, did any of you guys play Gem? I, tr I tried it for a, a short time, but didn't get very far. Okay. Although Gem is clearly popular, I mean, they ha we had that list a few weeks ago of like the top yeah. ten each shop game or top ten indie games on Switch, and Gem was on it. So there's definitely Good for a Gem. So there's de there's definitely something to that game that maybe maybe a, a game where you punch people in the face is more my speed. Yeah, yeah. Like it's... I think this might be, especially if you're not as much of a shooter guy. I think like I'm personally not as much of a shooter guy, but Gem really clicked with me. I think Super Crush KO will kind of it takes a lot of the things that I liked about Gem, but just kind of applies them to a slightly different genre, even if it doesn't feel wholly that different from Gem. Is Gem totally outrageous? Uh, not really. Like visually, it has a very distinct art style that that Super Crush KO kind of shares. Um, were you, like, trying to set up a joke that I didn't yes. get? Yes. Okay. Gem, it's a Gem cartoon the from the Oh, A's Gem and the Hologram? And the okay. Yeah, you're older than me. <laughs> Not even by that much. Yeah, but I just, I, Gem Never and the Hologram. Mind. I uh, tried. Before my time. Okay. Uh, other games that I saw uh, going down my little list that I have, Cyber Shadow, which I think a lot of people mm. here are pretty stoked for. Yeah. So that is by Mechanical Skull, uh, but it's being published by our friends at Yacht Club Games. So it's a game that's been in development for like five or six years by one dude, uh, Arn Hunsaker. Uh, and he's he's been working on the game by himself. I believe that the, about two years ago was when Yacht Club first started talking to him. I don't know exactly how long he's been like working under their wing, but dude still making the game is very much inspired by stuff like not Ninja Gaiden actually, but Shadow of the Ninja, the Natsume game that is apparently on 3DS Virtual Console, as well as like NES Batman. Uh, some of the enemy design Ooh. is kind of evocative of Contra. Uh, it it so I went from demo to demo of playing this and then going to play the Messenger DLC. So kind of comparing them since they are both like ninja games that clearly throw back to the nes era uh the movement is not as fluid in cyber shadow but not really in a bad way like there's a lot more deliberate movement here your character is a lot heavier less nimble uh but it's still like it it just felt really good it reminded me a lot of shovel Knight, despite the fact yeah. that yeah they're both yacht club joints right now but this game totally spun up outside of Shovel Knight's purview. But they definitely, like, I see why Yacht Club would have been like, yes, this is a game that fits our brand because it really does feel like it's a, like, it, like this could have been a Yacht Club made game and I would not have doubted it. Nice. Uh, it's level-based. Uh, it seems like there's reason to go back and revisit old levels with new power-ups. Some of the power-ups that you get, like, uh, I played the first level where you don't, it's just kind of like you you got a sword. You use it and then you fight a boss by, by hitting it with the sword. Um, 
And then I played one later on where I, I got three abilities over the course of it. One was like a shuriken that you just, you know, fired straight. There was kind of like a an, an up fire thrust that you could do. And then there was like a downward slam that you could do in the air. Um, it's just, I want to play more of the, the game. It felt really good. Uh, we we have we have video of that and Super Crush KO up on this YouTube channel, um, and I also have a preview written of Cyber Shatter that may or may not be turned into a video as well in the next few days. Um, next up on my list is Sayonara Wild Hearts, which is described as like a, a Swedish pop album video game, and it, it sure is that. It basically it. It feels like a mix of Res and Elite Beat Agents. If it like if they had a baby with Eurovision, uh, <laughs> shut up and take my money. <laughs> yeah, like I. So I, I we had a, we had an appointment for this game on Saturday, which is the third day of the show. Uh, Alex Kalafi, uh, co-founder of this this here show, um, uh, Alex Kalafi played it on Thursday. It was like it just feels like Res, and I'm like I still don't know what that game is, but I'm excited to play it. And he's right, it does just feel like Res. Um, so there's some levels that are, are basically just like, it's not that you're playing a shooter, but you're, you're, you're like, it, it, it's like a racing game, so to speak. And you're just moving to different lanes to like collect, um, gems and then build up your, your, your score. Uh, cause you do get, you know, different, I think it's like bronze, silver, platinum, that stuff. Uh, so you do have that, and then there's also like elite beat agent like button press moments where like you know you'll time the button press and then you'll do a move on screen. There was some combat done in that manner, uh, some like avoiding attacks and things like that, and it was just it was a spectacle. I played it with headphones on, uh, in handheld mode at the Annapurna booth at PAX East, and I finished the demo and kind of looked to both sides to be like, can I get away with playing this demo again? <laughs> <laughs> which I think is probably the best thing I can say about that game uh, is that I just wanted to play more of it right away. Yeah. So this got rolled out in, I think this got announced in December and it's like the, the orig- initial reveal didn't make any sense with the way you're describing it. Yeah. This is, I think I'm, I think I'm in. And they're still like working on the music for it. Uh, all the music's made in house at Samogo in Sweden. <laughs> um, and and I wonder if they're going to try to represent Sweden in Eurovision, because uh, they probably could could do that with these songs. Uh, next up on my list of games is Mortal Kombat 11. We couldn't take any footage of it. Aww. It's a mystery to everybody. Honestly, I don't really know why we had that weird restriction. Uh, they did only show it in handheld mode, but it looked real good in handheld mode. I uh, did find out that Shiver Entertainment is working on the port to Switch. Uh, they did some Scribble Knots ports uh, over the past year. Uh, I don't know how good those ports were, but from what we saw of Mortal Kombat 11, it seems like it's running fine on Switch. Like, clearly, it's it reminded me a lot of that Vita version. Uh, the Vita version of Mortal Kombat 9. Uh, like, that, that ran really well on Vita. Yes, it... Maybe some of the graphics looked a little like rough because it was taking a, a big HD game and squeezing it onto a Vita. Um, <laughs> but it ran really well. Like I played <clears throat> through that game on Vita, and Mortal Kombat 11 looks like it's going to play totally fine on Switch from what we saw from that demo. As yeah. always, it's not the final game. We haven't seen what it looks like on a TV, but very encouraging from what we saw, and it's. It's one of those things where, like, I wonder what they were trying to hide by oh. not having us take any footage of it. Yeah. Or have it on it, a TV. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it could have been, I mean, like, the 1080 visuals weren't running smooth enough yet. Where they were yeah. Running. I mean, I, that I game's mean, coming out in, in three weeks. Yeah. So Although I Ed, hope Ed, the visuals are good. And Ed, Ed Boone is already out there on, uh, on, on various places talking, like, yeah, the switch is going to run at sixty frames. Okay, that's cool. What resolution? Yeah, that oh. yeah. I mean, we'll we'll find out as we get closer. Um, but I have a and, question about Mortal Kombat Eleven. That's yeah. not necessarily about Mortal Kombat. Is it running? Are they using the same engine that they did for uh, Injustice Two? Oh, dude, I have no idea. Two look incredibly similar. Probably. Okay, I, I, I still think everything. Wanna... Did they use Unreal for everything? I still want to get Injustice 2. I haven't gotten it yet. I'm waiting for a flash sale. The Ninja Turtles are in it, so I'm going to have to buy it at some point. 
Yeah, I've heard Injustice 2 is real good, but I haven't played a a Nether Realm game it, since the first Injustice, I think, because I never yeah, played Mortal Kombat X or 10 or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it looks like um looks like Injustice 2 runs on the Mortal Kombat 10 engine, which is Unreal Engine 3, oh. and the mobile version runs on UE4. So at this point I'm assuming it would be running on on Unreal 4. Okay. Interesting. There you go. Uh, Last game I'm going to talk about is Duck Game. Duck Game. Um, I don't have the duck button. The duck button is actually... Uh, it's it's in my son's room because um, uh, he's been playing with the duck button that I got from the press appointment that we had for Duck Game. Is it so, a button quacks? Yes. Because uh, there is a button that you can press in Duck Game that you quack. Nice. Uh, <laughs> there's also a button where you can play dead. Um, I knew nothing about this game going into it other than like, okay, dopey local multiplayer single screen game, cool. Well, we played it at PAX East like three years ago. Yeah, I, I never did. <laughs> okay, I did. it was me. Me, I think Zach and I both did that, but it, it's been so long, I've completely forgotten what that game's deal was. Yeah. So, but I, I did go with uh, Matt Matt Zawadniak, um from Nintendo World Report. Uh, he's a big fan of it. He's played a bunch with his friends on Steam. Uh, so I went into this game playing against him, the single developer who worked on it. Apparently, Armature Studios uh, helped with the port to Switch, but it's made by one guy. Um, his name is, is Landon. I forget his last name. Uh, I think is I think the developer is like Corptron Games, it's being published by Adult Swim Games on, right. on Switch. Uh, and then there was like the product marketing guy from from Adult Swim Games. So it's people that all had experience with the game. So they just clowned on me when we first started playing. I got I got I got some wins as we go through it, but it is like it's it's that tower falling in yeah. fast paced nature of. But like, so I, you can probably set it to different win totals. But we were playing it where it was the the first ten wins. But the way it works is that I think I, I don't know the exact amount, but you play like eight games in a row, and then there will be an intermission that will show you like who's where in the standings so like someone could get to 10 but if you get above them before the next intermission then you could win oh. um but so the way it works is that uh every stage is designed but they're randomly shown up there's also there is a level type that is procedurally generated there are created levels which will be sort of able to be shared online like i think uh what what the developer is working on now is something like if let's say Zach, you and I made a bunch of levels of Duck Game. We played online. When we play online together, uh, the level pool that's being picked will be both of our created levels. Okay. So they can kind of, and then like I would have like I, I in theory, the game's not done yet. It's coming out in a month from now. It's coming out May second, I think. Uh, in theory, uh, then there might also be the functionality that if like we play a bunch of online games together, I'm like, oh, well, like what's that level that Zach had? I would be able to go to like a recently played list and be able to like download that locally onto my system. Okay. So duck game sounds like, cause when, when me and Donald played it, um, we asked probably CJ if it will have online play. He said he didn't know at the time. It does. It, since it does, it has an immediate, uh, benefit over tower fall. Yeah. Um, switch wanna. only switch no. only. However, we should, we should play duck game online guys this game's great yeah, uh, yeah. so yeah. like you do like you, you basically you all spawn on on a you know a, a level that's that's uh, you know there's it's random selections but the levels are designed for the most part and they usually like some of them might have some hooks like there's one where like you could pick up metal suits of armor to wear and then there were there were magnets that like could attract you and then throw you off the edge but then a lot of them it's kind of like you just spawn into like a design level floating in space and then you pick up guns and try to kill each other. Um, you can do stuff like play dead, which I noticed the developer do this when we playing. Where like I just like fire a shotgun blast at him while he was in in midair. Where like his jump, he should have gotten hit by the bullets, but he'd hit the button to play dead. And then when you hit that button, you just ragdoll. So he'd be in like midair and a jump, hit the button to ragdoll, and then dodge the bullet and just drop to the ground. Uh, so there's there's a lot of nuance to what is a profoundly silly idea. It was no surprise talking to the developer after we played that like he's a big Smash Brothers fan, a big fan of Sakurai, and it, and it really comes through because it is a game that is just meant about like giggling and laughing and having a good time with friends. But there is a, a deeper level to it if you want to engage with that. But also because of how dopey it is, 
just because you understand that deeper level, you, like you're not unbeatable. Yeah. Um, cause like, uh, I, like I said, like, like, so I think when we played, I, I did get last place, but not that bad. And I, I'd never played the game before. And I played it with three people that have played the game before. Um, I think like two people, like one person finished with like 11 wins, one with nine or 10, someone had like seven and then I had six or something like that. And that's, that's me never playing the game, playing against yeah. people who were experienced with it. Do um, you, you get to pick different species of duck or are you all um, male? Like you do get to pick your duck and you can pick a hat as well. Oh. Um, and they're all different colors, but I don't know how much they are like different, different species. Yeah, of duck. cool ducks, yeah. Um, that I'd have so, to research more. So here's my plan. Um, I'm going to do two rounds of duck game and then I'm going to go boot up untitled goose game when it comes out. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but we should, we should play this online after, uh, last PAX East thing. Um, we had two panels. Uh, there was an Animal Crossing panel. That was me, Alex Kalapi, and John Raritan. Uh, you can watch that. Uh, there should be like a replay on Twitch. Uh, but the the one that was kind of my my little baby was who wants to be a Nintendo Wear that Zach supplied questions for that we didn't we only got through three games because I had this brilliant idea of like let's do some games to pick who's going to be the contestant. The That's first a good game idea. was the dodgeball game Stick Four. Yeah. The, the, the first game was a dodgeball game called Stick Bowl that we had. So you could do six players. And I'm like, all right, we'll get six players up. Um, I noticed when I played it that, like, okay, everybody, like, won a game the first time I played it. And that kind of took a long time. But that's not going to happen when we do it live. Um, we ended up playing seven rounds of the dodgeball game because <laughs> everybody won one. Uh, it took about the – so we had an hour-long panel. It wound up – all said and done, it was, like, an hour ten. Because uh, we were the last panel of the night, and they let us go over a little bit. Uh, Stick Bold took up the first twenty minutes. Um, after that, it kind of ran smoothly because then we did we did a, a round of Tower Fall to pick the second contestant, and then we did Smash Brothers. And those Tower Falls, uh, we did it. Uh, we kind of re re we fixed our re, re yeah fixed our rules for Tower Fall to make it go a lot quicker. And then Smash, you can do like four minute time limit. Yeah. Um, so. So like that, that was a little rocky start. But we also did find that Matt Zawadniak from from the website uh, is a savant at commentating. He had never played stickball. He had never seen stickball or towerfall in his life, and he did a bang up job huh. um, yeah. commentating that for a crowd of two hundred people. That's um, serious, man. So so uh so I'm gonna say this here. We're we're gonna try to do some duck game games and maybe get him to commentate. There you go. Nice. Um, it was an offhand comment that now I'm I'm saying on the record. Send this clip to Matt and be like, "This is your future." <laughs> and he's really into duck game. I don't think it'll be a hard sell. Nice. And something got to five hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. That's so we only got through three games of Nintendo Wear, but it's like I think the first one, the guy got up to like the thirty-two thousand dollar question, so so ten questions in, but then got it wrong, so he went back down to a yeah. thousand. He he gambled. The, the next guy went up to 200, uh, the 13th of 15 questions. Wow. And the other dude, the, and the final guy got up 14 of 15 questions. And actually, I, he was like, all right, I'm going to walk away here. And I asked him, what would, what would you have picked? Yeah, he right. would have gotten it right. Oh, um, oh, but then, we, but then I, I asked him the million dollar question just to see. Uh, and he got that one wrong. So, oh, that's but insane. man, we, we, I think that would have, I think. I'm speaking here as somebody who's actually managed to win a Nintendo Wear before on a telethon. I think that would have been the first time we've ever gotten to a million. If yeah. if if, yeah. if he had gotten if he had gone for it. First time five hundred thousand, I think. Yeah, no, I th I think I think I should keep better record of this. I think we had someone get to like the ninth or tenth or no, no, like the eleventh or twelfth question. Okay. Yeah. yeah what I was think what was the million that he would have lost? Um, it was one that I did about uh, who designed the NES. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, does anybody know without me giving any answers? I don't even remember. Uh, if I heard the name, I'd probably know. I'm so yeah. mad that I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. too bad, Justin. <laughs> you never know. You'll have to watch the video to find <laughs> out. All right. So Justin, uh, you've been playing the um, you've been playing some Yoshi's Crafted World, which, considering that's the big Nintendo game of the last what month and a half, week, that we, 
we we should probably talk about that. So, so how far in are you into Yoshi right now? I'm a little past the uh, first gem you collect. I guess that's what it is. I, I, the, the story goes like I guess uh, there's like a happy thing and it has gems that power it. Yeah. Now you have to go collect the gems to repower it. You know, you know, you know this type of story. Uh huh. <laughs> so uh, I got the first gem back, and uh, then it gives you like an actual branching path of different places you can go. Uh, this game, uh, I don't know how I feel about this game. I'm in, I'm having fun. It's not challenging at all, except uh, the challenge, like many Yoshi games as of late, come from uh, trying to find everything. And uh, all Yoshi games. It has, actually, this one hasn't been too bad collecting the main things. Uh, so it's actually much more forgiving, I think, even than uh, Wooly World. When I think Wooly World, you had to collect all of the same thing when you beat a level for it to like. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. It, doesn't it save? It saves how many you've gotten. Yeah, this one you only you only have to collect everything once, and if like you miss something, then you just have to go back and get the one thing you missed, and finish the level. I think it was that way in Wooly World, though. Was it? I thought Wooly Wooly World you had to get like all the the like flowers. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. For some reason, I felt like you had to get every 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 of. You don't need to get them all at once for it to count as one hundred percent, but each category, I felt like you needed to like. Oh, that could be it. I just remember Wooly World's problem was like. Half of that shit was hidden in invisible clouds. Yeah, there's a little bit of that here, but it's probably not as bad as Wooly World from what I've seen so far. Uh, where the game gets weird. Oh, first of all, before I get to that, yeah, you can play every level uh, on the flip side. Uh, but I was thinking about it today. I think in one of the original trailers for this game, it was showing you being able to f go to the flip side more freely. Yeah, yeah, like you could do it in the level. Yeah, so now it's which I think they, they showed this game off pretty early. Yeah, well, I guess they considered. stripped that, which uh, I don't know. How, I think it may have been better if they kept the old idea of being able to just flip things, because now it's just like, oh, go replay the level and find the Poochie Pups and do it real fast. So basically, you're just speed running the level till you hear barking and then hitting a Poochie Pup with an egg and running. So it's kind of like added fluff in a way, because that part's not too challenging from what I've seen so far. There may have been like one or two levels where like you can screw something up. But uh, the more challenging part is uh, and somewhat annoying is you're giving given uh, challenges to go back to these levels multiple times for it. Like I'll talk to a guy's like, yeah, go into level and find this and I'll be either in the foreground or the background or find multiple of these things in the foreground or background. So basically you're just going through the level. For one thing. Yeah. I noticed that in the demo. I didn't like it. Yeah. And I talked about this on Twitter. It reminds me of Highlights Magazine when you had to do those finds in the picture. <laughs> I had fun with those things. Yeah, I, I think I mean, it's I, not fun, but it can be frustrating when you're like, I made it to the end of the level and I missed something, so now I'm going to walk backwards. Yeah. Just like put that as a challenge in every stage. Yeah, but the th I think it really bothers me because you have to wait for, I guess it's like each. You have, like you have to beat like, each world, yeah, and, each then, world and then the like, guy will be like, go through these again. And he yeah. doesn't give you everything at once. So you you get no. like one thing, and then it'll be like, okay, now that you got this, I got another thing for you to find. It might be in the same level. And you're like, well, why didn't you just give me all of them at once so I could do it oh, all yeah. at once? <clears throat> I think it's also like I, I kind of started learning the language of the game a little bit. So when I'd be playing the levels the first time, I'd be like, oh, I probably need to get a bunch of those like different colored sheep. Yeah, you can like figure kind of mm. figure that out. It's also when you do the target thing, it kind of highlights different things in the background and a lot yeah. of those things that you go back I do. For. I think there's part of me that wishes if it would like the first time you go through a level it would and you hit that thing it would kind of credit it so it'd be like oh you already found it here's your flower yeah, That'd be exactly nice. it's yeah. kind of it, I do it, I you say that it really makes me think of how with the regular collectibles you only need to collect them once but with those you could collect them and yeah. in that sense it just like doesn't count until they want want it to. yeah so like kind of weird it did not bother me as much but I totally see like. The, the padding argument for all those things. Like I've been having it because it, it gives me a good excuse. And I'm also coming at it from, from like playing it with my, my 10 month old on my lap. Uh, that like, it gives me an excuse to like go through a level and just kind of romp through it and not really pay attention. And like maybe 
look for those last couple of red coins that I was missing or, or try to get that flower that I screwed up a little mini game the first time through while looking for like a specific type of cow. Yeah, I mean the uh the uh gotcha missables are kind of uh, Oh, there's annoying. those. No. There's not too many of them, Zach, from what I've seen, but there's okay. been maybe like a couple and a few levels. It is, yeah. It's it's not as egregious as past Yoshi games. As someone who that bothered me to high hell in past Yoshi games, yep. it's not that bad. Because what it'll be, it'll be the thing where it's like, oh, like you have to collect these coins in X amount of time. Like that'll be. The... Oh, so it's not like like in because I'm thinking of specifically Kirby's Rainbow Curse, <clears throat> where you go in a mini stage or a room, and it's like, you know, here's the collectible way over here. It doesn't tell you what you're supposed to do. And all of a sudden, like the floor starts dropping. Yeah. Like, yeah. What the fuck am I supposed to do here? No. And then it, you. I mean, like, there's. Yeah, the whole level. They're, they're like kind of like, um, I mean, not necessarily auto scrolling, but definitely like forward movement things where like you're on a train or you're being chased by a dinosaur. Or you're in a mech. Yeah. Yeah. Or that, like, and like those, right, but those are also back. like very quick right. levels to replay. I played that okay. level. Yeah, it's frustrating though if like you miss something and you have to play the level because then you have to finish the level for yeah some of those things go and it's like oh, I got the thing and now I just gotta ride this out and it's not very ch like the game really from a difficulty standpoint is not very challenging at all. Very I think I, I said it I said it in my review that it never gets hard. The last like handful of levels get tricky. Yeah, and where you're kind of like oh like that was a little like that. That made me think a little bit. Like, I had to move quickly during that situation. <laughs> and uh, if you're using costumes, the whole heart situation is almost a non yeah. factor at all because you can take five hits and then I think you can even get some back if you hit checkpoints and stuff like that. Yep. That, so you're basically almost invincible. Just scan a random amiibo not compatible with the game and play in the amiibo box like I do and you get five hits. I will almost certainly get this game just because there's dinosaurs and I don't want to have to turn on my <laughs> what Wii other U Nintendo play games World. Are, whatever what other new Nintendo games are coming out on Switch in 2019 so far. Uh, new Super Mario Brothers UDX and Yoshi's Crafted World. We are a quarter of the way through the year, and those are the only two Nintendo published games on your system. Hey, hey, hey. Not <laughs> Next week, we can stick our heads into a bird's rear end. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I'm really excited for, for Labo VR Kit, uh, Box Boy. I did play Box Boy and Box Girl at PAX East. Sounds um, like more Box Boy. Yeah, yeah, sure is a new Box Boy game. Uh, they added co-op. The co-op seems, like, fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, I mean, it's, it's totally fine. <laughs> but, like... Is it a compilation of all the box boys or no. is it all new stuff? No, it's all new stuff. Okay, I kind of wish it was a compilation. There is there's like a buttload of levels though. And like oh, yeah. there's a single player mode, there's a co-op mode that all the levels are designed for co-op and then there is one with the what what looking back at the Nintendo Direct, they just refer to as it's like I forget the guy's name, but it's like the tall one and like in the direct they're like here's his name. He's the tall one. <laughs> Uh, but there's a nope. preview of that up on NintendoWorldReport.com. And and the one the one good April Fool's joke this year, because thank God most companies have decided to get away from that, was Box Boy, or Box Boy is now circular and Kirby is now square. Yes. Oh yeah, I saw that. Hey, next week we're getting that uh, Gunman Clive guys robot game. Uh, we're getting that tomorrow. Oh uh, shit! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For the for those of you who who want to point out that yeah, there's only been two Nintendo games this year on the Switch. Um, there's been like two or three Game of the Year candidates seemingly coming out yeah, every like, week. Not not overall knocking the Switch's lineup this year because like there's I mean, yeah. look at look at our reviews. Um, I've I've reviewed a lot of games that I have loved. One of which we'll talk about because Donald's been playing it very shortly. Um. I'm just speaking from an overall Nintendo published perspective on the Switch, and they yeah. have absolutely punted away the first four months of the year, yeah. at least. Because, yeah. like, like honestly, we we have nothing on the docket confirmed. Um, it's it's this With is our, it's a Wii U port. <laughs> it's 
Yoshi's Crafted World, totally fine. Loved it. You can read my review of both of those games. They're both very positive. Uh, Labo VR Kit, Box Boy and Box Girl. That's the that's a third of the year. Do the, uh, the Nintendo game. I mean, technically, they're not Nintendo. That's that's a uh, that's well, they're not Nintendo published, but yeah, they're Nintendo, Nintendo games. games. And I guess like I, I you, you, Travis strikes again. I think like the physical versions public. I don't know. Yeah, um, that's I want to talk about Travis because I played that last week a little bit. I played the part of that game. Uh, I enjoyed it. It's a fun game. Uh, I haven't played the DLC yet. I've been yeah, meaning I to play the DLC. I haven't gotten through it. Uh, I'm gonna try and beat it, but. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Like, it's not bad. It's not good. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Ninja Turtles 2 on NES beat em up type game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, it's. I, I came away pretty positive on Travis Strikes Again, mostly because I, I think I just missed the No More Heroes games. Uh, it's got good I think style. It, if you, it, like, yeah, that's the thing is that, like, the gameplay is honestly very repetitive. <laughs> Oh yeah, but the thing is, is that it doesn't really overstay its welcome. Like everything kind of has a, a silly hook, and outside of that stupid, stupid one, um, the one where you're like exploring a top-down like development or There's something. One I just did in the head yeah, chasing. yeah, that sucks. Uh, that goes on way too long. No, what uh, goes but... on way too long is that text adventure but then it rips on itself later. yeah yeah like the text like, adventure oh God, like that's the thing is that like time. it's like just to put such, the game back in the box <laughs> it's such a wink and a nod of like we know how ridiculous this all is that even in its repetition even in some bad things with that game i really really enjoyed it and had a great time and like there's they, they keep on like with every chapter with the excite like i really think that that second game is is bad and goes on way too long. Everything else, like it's just long enough that I'm like, that was cute and clever. Now I'm ready to move on. I and actually did the one after that too, with like the hotel. That, yeah, like the Resident Evil kind of parody. Um, and there, there's some, there's just some really goofy stuff in that, and and I love it. I'm kind and, of confused with the plot, but it's been yeah, so long since I the plot is nonsense. I, I remember nothing of No More Heroes one and two. I was googling <laughs> characters to be like, "Who's that again? Is that relevant?" I know I'm kind of kind of lost with that, but it, it I don't know. I don't know what to think. It's not bad. It's not good. It's kind of like mediocre. I like the style though. Yeah, and, uh, I played some Downwell. Uh, That's a great game. Yeah, also, Downwell was amazing. 2019 Switch game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's it's okay. I think it could do a better job explaining the power ups and stuff. I think you need but, to get good. Okay. Yeah, there's there's not a lot to learn there. I mean, there's like four types of guns and there's like two buttons. Which one it was, and I'm like, no, wait, I want to go back. It was a mobile game that was totally playable on no mobile without issue because it's like two buttons. And uh, yeah, I, I think it could use a little more explaining the power ups. I don't know what that balloon's doing. You can I, explore and figure it out for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's like no, I, I, I need totally, the easy mode. <laughs> I totally get where you're coming from, except for uh, I'll say that part of why I really enjoyed that game, because I was like, what does this power-up do? I'm going to try to figure out what this power-up does. And yeah, I don't know what the balloon does either. <laughs> <laughs> what the f <laughs> what does this do? But like, I just, like, that's the thing is that it would be like, oh, this is a power-up I haven't gotten. I want to know what it does. Like, how can this factor into my game? And and like that was it was a, there was a sense of discovery of that game that really clicked with me as I especially as I got into the deeper the deeper worlds too. I like the dumb ass idle animations you unlock. Yep. Now he's rolling. <laughs> well, no, but they're they're all like different. There's different nuances to all them. But, oh, really? Yeah, because like one of them, like I think you start off with more health, but you have less power ups you can choose from. Another oh, one, I, think I didn't has, even like, realize that. Jump. Okay, yeah, I'll have to test field. that out. But yeah, that's <clears throat> what I've been playing. I don't cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, Zach, what have you been playing as of late? <clears throat> uh, I'll talk about uh, two things. Um, <clears throat> for reasons I'm unsure of, uh, XSeed went ahead and sent me a physical copy of Fate Extella Link. <laughs> Oh, I was wondering <laughs> how you got a hold of that. Probably because they sent me a physical copy of the other game. Uh, but I, uh, I've been playing it. I'm, I'm not very far, but I like it more than the Umbral Star. Although it's basically the same game. 
yeah there's there's more menu crap to deal with which i don't know if i like like having a level like bond with the servants or yeah like in between mission stuff um i feel, I feel like there's a lot more uh you know you have to equip stuff and i mean it's all basically the same as the first game it feels like there's just more of it uh it looks better it doesn't look significantly better but i think it looks and performs better and uh it's a warrior's game so so you will beat up five thousand things in one round yeah and the reason i said on twitter donald can i play it on easy mode is because if i play it on normal mode Missions take like 20 minutes or more. On yeah. easy, they take 10. Because <laughs> you mow everything down, even the, the mini bosses. So yeah. I just want to blow through the game, but I'm, I'm yeah. enjoying it enough. Get, get through the storyline as quickly as possible. I don't blame you. Yeah, and um, I'm going to buy some of the DLC, of course. Not all of it, but some. Uh, Mostly for the waifus. Maybe. <laughs> and then I, I've, I've been doing Vita stuff. I, I've been wanting to rearrange how games are on my memory cards forever. Uh, so I finally downloaded Content Manager tonight as we do this, and it's it's uploading to the PC. But I've been playing uh, Sanran Kegura Estival Versus because there are downloaded missions that I'd gotten that I completely forgot about. And Estival is the best Sanran game. Excuse me. Uh, those missions are really hard, really, really hard. And, um, but I like it. I like Estival more than the newest PS4 game, which I haven't beaten yet. Uh, yeah, I like Senran. I'm, I'm still waiting for some news on a Western release of the pinball game. Maybe we won't yeah. get it. Uh, Xseed, get on that. Yeah, no, man. Well, well, I think I think we'll find we'll find out either way by the time E three is over. That's probably true, yeah. Because Anime World Report will be out in full force at E three, and we <laughs> and we'll make sure that we uh, oh, that we no. we find Where out what, what what the scoop is. Hey, you it's, know the, the longtime producer of that series whose name I don't remember quit. Yeah, he, he quit because he didn't like that he had to take intimacy mode out of the PS four game. You just boo hoo. Boo-hoo. I mean, so I mean, Sony is being a little bit uh, Puritan right now. We've seen that with some uh, with some games that are having their other consoles or, or PC releases delayed because they have to get through Sony's BS, which has to, which is from J Japanese games that have to go to America for approval, even mm. if they're not going to release in the U.S. Oh, that's real dumb. Yeah. So good. Good job, Sony. Well, I will say that it's a weirdly inconsistent thing because every other Senran game's gotten through scot free, and I mean, Lord knows there are more objectionable content-wise games on PS4 or Vita or whatever is just stupid. But but his reason for quitting is, I think, stupid. And yet he's still going to be like he's going to be working as it, working yeah, he's a consultant but... now. He's basically doing the same job, just. <laughs> Not getting paid, not getting a uh, full salary for it. Right, right, right. So, long live Senran Kagura. Yeah. And um, also, also, uh, you mentioned before the show you were rearranging, uh, rearranging your cards to get all the Neptunia games on one memory card. Is it all right yeah. if I drop that card into Mount Doom? <laughs> if you can get a hold of it. <sighs> oh, and I put yeah. together the Labo robot. The Labo robot building that thing was really cool, and seeing it go together <laughs> was really great. And then it, you have to play it. It's not good. I feel like all my Labo experience, the most fun part is building it. and then It is. <laughs> Which is totally okay. Yeah. I haven't done the vehicle kit. And I haven't done the robot. Neither have I. I. I got the robot on clearance at Target for like 17 bucks. That's about right. Yeah, I, was, I went and they were all gone. I was going to buy some backups just for the parts. But That's not a bad idea. You can I'm probably sure other stores will start dropping them. Yeah. They got to make room for the. Uh, they got to make room for the VR kit, especially if they're carrying two SKUs of it. <laughs> Three, it? right? Four, right? No, you get the main one. No, the two. Uh, the two expansions to the starter kit 
are only on Nintendo.com or on the Nintendo oh, Online Store. If that's you're why I couldn't find them. Oh, what are those? <laughs> so I'm yeah. going to have to buy the blaster alone or all of it. Uh, you you can let me pull blaster up the plus score. goggles. I'm sorry, or all of it. Yeah, or you can, or you could buy the, you could buy blaster plus goggles, and then if you want to shove your your face into the rear end of a bird, you can get that kit separately, or you can get from that Nintendo. kit plus one of the from Nintendo. Yeah, okay. So, so it'd be like, and they're twenty bucks, so it'll work out to like sixty. All right, that's fine. I was wondering why uh, the other ones didn't appear. Yeah. Okay. They're only on Nintendo. Nintendo's online store. Um, really quickly, because I'm I'm not I'm only I haven't unlocked the first world that you have to unlock yet, but I've been playing uh, a bit some Baba is You. Oh, Baba and is good. Very interested in this game. Baba is great. Baba, right now for me, Baba is goatee. Mm. Yeah. I mean, granted, most of what I most of what I have played so far goes into the best remake category for my own personal game of the year list. But um, yeah, this is it's a very very mind bending puzzle game that I've had to really think outside the box to figure out some of the puzzles. Yeah, on. like uh, that's it's it's it is a mind bending game. That's that's just what it is. It'll, it'll wrinkle your brain, kids. Nice. Um, and it's engrossing, and like the way everything animates and the music, like it's it's one of the best puzzle games I think I've I've ever played. Yeah, because you get you get thrown into an area like okay, I can only move, I can only wait, I can only move three words, and I got to get through this. Yeah, and like and it's like trying to figure out what okay, what combinate like what combination of how the of the rules that are fixed can work with the the rules that I can maneuver to try and get to the point where I'm winning. Huh. It it's very like in, in a way it's kind of similar to the old adventures of Lolo, but with a lot to say, of it looks a little Lolo -y. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely worth checking out. It's only I think it's fifteen bucks. And you're you're doing yourself a disservice if you miss this one. All right. So, so like Maybe don't wait for a flash sale worth fifteen. I would, yeah, I'd say it's worth it's worth full price. I bought it day one, and then I'm not regretting it, even okay. though I only got to play it. Started okay. playing it on Sunday. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not sure if this would warrant a physical, but we, you know, stranger things have happened. I, I think you need to play those, Justin. Though, like I so, said, somebody, I'm so careful with. And that's something I'm really, really dead set on playing right now. I'm like, I'm gonna wait for physical. Is there a is there a Soldier Boy version of this game? I'm trying to think what that would be, and no. Oh, Neil, do you know? No. Baba is you. <laughs> that that'll be the, that'll be the sequel in two years. No, it's just gonna wind up on Soldier Boy's new console. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the 3DS. It'll be playing so, Firefest. Oh boy. Okay. Um, so with that, let's actually get to some other news here. Uh, one one thing that did that I forgot to put on the outline actually, but it's very quick. Hellblade: Send a Sacrifice was at PAX, apparently looking very good, and that's going to be out next week. From from. Microsoft's Ninja Theory. So the Microsoft Nintendo partnership continuing to pay off, even though this was <laughs> technically a game that they made before they got bought. Also, some really good, some really good performance in that game. I hear it was award-winning, but I find that hard to believe. I don't Did like the... Ninja Theory's games, but I've heard they... this game is good. If you yeah. like Ninja Theory's games. It it is a it is a character action game definitely, but I think it's more of the I think this is a more cerebral action yeah. game than what you would normally get from Ninja Theory. Yeah, with an interesting plot. Yeah. So that'll be out next week. Um, and yes, online games for April are out. We've got Punch Out. Yay! We've got Star Soldier for those of you who like your yeah. shooters with Scrolly and. 
Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels cool. or Super Mario Brothers 2. Um I took a flash poll last night on tw- on our on our Twitter at Nintendo underscore NWR. Let me go grab the results on that because my question is which of those which is harder, beating the final boss of punch out or beating lost levels? Lost levels. Lost levels. Especially okay. since to play all the lost levels, don't you need to like go through the game multiple times or something like that to get all the hidden? You, no, you need to to get the like world nine. You have to play the game without warping, so yeah, you but, have to see every level. Yeah, that's pretty difficult. Yeah, and and apparently, uh, looks like we've got almost a two to one here. A very nice sixty nine votes. Pointing right. to uh, lost levels being the more difficult feat, although beating, as, as pointed out in the re- one of the replies to that tweet, beating Punch Out with HD lag, that might be harder. Oh, but, I oh. still don't think so. But uh, besides, <clears throat> you can also play that handheld anyway. You know, and, you know what's harder than than lost levels on a TV? What lost levels in Super Mario Brothers Deluxe? For the Game Boy Color. Oh God! I beat that I, shit. I, I I beat that too. A long time ago, I couldn't do it anymore, but I did it back it's, then. It's not fun to uh, play the original version we got on uh, Mario All Stars because it has the weird block punching thing, where if you're running and break a block, you kind of get stuck on the block. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's like a weird. That- because that's the only way I've ever been able to beat lost levels like that yeah, is, like, with, is with All Stars. Like, that's why All Stars isn't very good. The physics are screwed up. <laughs> Yet I think I've played All Stars more than I've played the original NES versions. Well, Donald, I'm I sorry. probably have two, honestly. But hey, nice to see that we're all we're all getting three games now. After that, yeah, it'll that, it'll uh, last a month. Uh, someone yeah. in the chat asked us. Uh, which three games do you do you like to see in the May lineup for NES Online? Mm. So it's not do you think will happen. Which one do we want I can to get happen? Dark real fast. Ninja Turtles two and or three, which won't happen for licensing reasons, but that's what I'd like to see. I can dream. Um. Shit, man. I'd like to see some Mega Man's, but that's not going to happen because you can buy them. Yeah, yeah. And no World Championships. Um, <laughs> I'm scrolling uh, through like a list of. I'm thinking Double Dribble. Yeah. Oh, Dragon Quest One would be cool. Yeah, that that has less of a of happening than Mega Man, but. I, I feel like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest are kind of screwed because you can buy a lot of those games like elsewhere on modern platforms. Like with all the Nintendo stuff, because yeah, you can buy them on 3DS, but like this is kind of a fresh start for them. Whereas Final I think on the I think NES. Square, yeah, I mean, but that's a fun, but that's that's like a one-time buy. Whereas this is forever. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. like I, I think things that I think things like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, especially Square Enix stuff that is available for purchase on like mobile will be a little bit harder to get on the, the switch online yeah. service. Uh, Eric Goblin really, brings up yeah. brown beginnings in the chat, which would be nice to see, especially if they have yeah. some yeah. edition that fixes some of that game's problems. Yeah. I'm going to say Lolo two Ninja Gaiden two. Yeah. Lolo yes. two. And, um, how about that weird it continues, please. How about that weird Metroidvania game that came out on Wii U or what? Euphoria? Yeah. Euphoria is really good. It's a good yeah. game. Um, how, maybe this is an off the board pick, especially considering I think Square Enix developed it initially. Rad Racer. Three, 3D World Runner. Well, maybe both have. Maybe Battle Toads. So it'll be nice enough. Battle Toads that... Save States is doable. Yes. Except in two player mode. For the second player. Is well, Bubble Bobble on it yet? No, but that's a great choice. Bubble okay. Bobble 2. Yeah. Get Bubble Bobble 2 on there. <laughs> we have so, what, what, so my 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 three hopes for May. 
would be uh, Super Nintendo games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, six. Um, Lolo 2, Ninja Gaiden 2, and, uh, oh god, what was the game that I literally just said? Bubble Bobble. For you. Oh, Bubble Bobble. Yeah, those would be my three picks. And then the next month, June can be... Well, uh, June, start... June, June will have E3, so we can launch Super Nintendo games there. Yeah, Bubble yeah, Bobble launch Super Nintendo Bobble games there, Bobble but Bobble. also also put out Star Tropics 2 in June, and oh god, there was another one that we just Star mentioned. Star Tropics 2? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. 1994. It is, it is bizarre. Um, it is, it is. You travel through time, but then one of the the time traveling things that you go to is you visit England with Sherlock Holmes, who is a fictional character. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you screwed something up, and now he's real. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think I think my main picks would be uh, Double Dribble. Bubble Bobble, and well, we need to get a Nintendo published game on there, don't we? Hotel Mario. No. Lolo 2. Okay. That, that'll work. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's Hal. So it's pretty much the same thing. But yeah. You're not Fire Emblem, Donald? You don't want a translated Fire Emblem? Um, that <laughs> they already is... have one. <laughs> well, not translated. No. Yeah, that's the problem. It's not translated. And even then, I don't think I'd want to go back. To, I think about the limit of what I can handle with uh, <laughs> Fire Emblem games. Going back that far would be mis- New Mystery of the Emblem, which is the essentially SNES sequel slash remake. Yeah. Well, I definitely want to see Nintendo World Championships. <laughs> that'd be fun to have on there. It's like a competition type game. Uh. I don't know what else. It's really hard for me to pick. There's so many. Little Samson. Yeah, that would be nice. Oh, oh man! You know how how many eBay scalpers would would start cutting themselves? That's if, if why I said. Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, because there's still a market for. Yeah, like, there's still a huge market for it. Really... Shantae yeah. did not suddenly drop in price when it got to the uh, 3DS shop. But it would be nice to have really hard to get games like that. Uh, isn't there? There's one. Panic like, restaurant. There's one. Mech game on NES I've never played, but I think it's kind of rare. Really? Mecha, yeah. Mecha Storm, I think? The one that was on the cover of Nintendo Power once? Like Metal Storm, maybe, or something? Yeah, Metal, Metal Storm. Storm. Yeah, I've perfect. never played that, but that looked interesting. I'd like to try that, so maybe throw that on there. But yeah, and I would like... I've never played Castlevania 3, which probably won't happen because that collection is coming out. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Although I've never, the... I've never played Ninja Gaiden 3, but I hear... Uh, Kid Dracula! <laughs> I that might also be on the collection. Yeah, yeah. I kind of hope that will be on the collection. Yeah, Although I've only the, played Kid Dracula on Game Boy. Yeah. Although the SR, the SRB rating for uh, the Castlevania collection actually came out, and they reference stuff that's only in the Genesis Castlevania Bloodlines, which is going to be on the on the Genesis Mini. Interesting. But it could also be coming in that collection, and if so, sweet. But if it's not. M2 in the collection, then, then well, you're gonna hold out and get 39 Who's other Zed games with who's it. Doing M2, well, Sega, well, no, yeah, no, no, they no. Have I meant M2. for the Konami collection, oh. the Konami ones. Um, oh, I don't know, they, they may be internal, they have not said who's doing yeah. the ports. Oh, I also want to. Even though it's clearly not going to happen at this point, I'd like Nintendo of America to give us Joy Mech Fight. Uh, yeah. Joy Mech Fight? Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it's out on the Japanese one. If you have oh, a Japanese oh. account, you can check it out. Yeah. It, huh. I want to I want to try that. I should make a Japanese account just to do that. But You should. Nintendo of America should have given it to us anyway. Yeah. Screw you guys. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't really hurt at all. Because no. they're all, yeah. What's the What's the harm? And even if you wanted to translate that game, how much text is really in it? Uh, and uh, why don't we get, for the first time on a console in America, not the 3DS, uh, that uh, Takamaru game? Oh, right. yeah. Takamaru's Ninja Castle. Yeah, or Myster- Mysterious Murasami Castle. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So that should come to the service also, because the only way to play that game in America ever has been on the 3DS. Mm. If we're if we're really shooting for the moon on that, can we also get the Summer Carnival '92? Yeah, yeah or Reka Reka '92. Yeah, that was kind of cool too. So 
I did play that on 3DS. Let's do it. Yeah. I want all the weird okay. stuff. Okay. <laughs> well, I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Oh, I just see breaking news here. Well, I know what I'm doing tomorrow night. Fire Emblem Channel announced. 16 minutes long. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> More waifus. So, just, um, speaking of waifus and, I guess, Atlas. Yeah. So, Atlas is teasing again. La- a couple of weeks ago, they announced they did. They finally had their per- Persona Five anime OVA air, and at the end, and the end, they announced we have something called Persona Five Royal. It apparently has a new playable character who might have also been data mined in, from Smash Brothers, and that's a PS4 thing. No release date. Now we've got another website going up, p5s.jp, which uh, is pointing to the second night of a two-night Persona 5 concert that's going to be held in Japan three weeks from tomorrow, April 25th. Just, For the love, just, just announce the damn thing. I can't wait until they're like coming to Switch, the Persona 5 fighting game. Um, actually, I think Arxis is kind of tied up right now, so that's pr- I believe they're working on like the Grand Blue fighting game along with like cross tag, keeping cross tag updated and all that. So we're probably not seeing Persona Five Arena until 2020, unless they want to announce it now. Yeah, but uh, I mean, like, I just hope the damn game comes to Switch. Yeah, just bring Persona Five to Switch. I don't care. What what letter comes after it? Just do just, it. Just bring it to Switch. Yeah, because we know we know you want to port it to a handheld, and well, you don't really have any other choice unless you want to bring it to cell phones, which that would take some pretty big cojones on the part of Alice to try and port that game to a mobile. But just enough with the announcement of an announcement of an announcement. Just launch it because yeah. we're also due for Joker and Smash in April. Yeah, and I guess that's probably I thought we might get something at the Smash Brothers tournament at PAX East. We did not, other than the announcement of another tournament at E3. Yeah. Uh you know what that tournament's it's three on three. Something. Yeah they're, I, they're I doing the they're doing s- like Smash busy. Squad Strike. Yeah. They're doing a squad strike squad strike play to have the team aspect of it. Although I, th- I still on? think I saw John Numbers competing in that anyway, so. Yeah, he's at every Nintendo tournament ever. Are there going to be items at this tournament? I think there, uh, there were in this in the yeah, Pax East one. It's very. Uh, but, um, yeah. So, yeah, so that tournament, which will probably feature a splat, if I had to guess, because it'll be coming up on that time, we'd probably get the announcement of what the last splat fest for Splatoon 2 will be. Oh. And. Because remember, they promised two years of Splatfest, though they did extend the 12 months of support to 18 and continue to drop new weapons up until like this week. Um, and they've all, and so we probably get that. And Joker will be well out, so it'll be about time maybe to do another character tease or character yeah. announcement. It wouldn't surprise me. E3 is in. Uh... June, it wouldn't surprise me if they just shadow dropped a Smash character. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think about it, what? So there's five that are supposed to be out by early next year. Is that? Yeah. So you think five, five by February 2020. Yeah. So with that in mind, so Joker will probably be in April. Um, whether it's a shadow drop or not, uh, I think like E3, there will be a new character either announced and really shortly after or announced there. I feel like it's Nintendo style to release the new character like day of E3. Like they um, did they probably, did probably Octo expansion last year. It's just gonna be and, it's gonna be announced at the Microsoft event. It's gonna be yeah. like Great Steve. Yeah. Or Master Chef. Or Banjo. Yeah. Well I really think but it's gonna be Battle Toad. Because of Microsoft's tweet months ago on whatever, like Appreciation Day, it's like we appreciate, no, we really dig Smash Brothers or something like that. Like they, there was like a, a Master Chief 
joining the fight or something. Yeah, or yeah. So what happened the... was Twitter gaming, I think, was like, who do you think would be nice to have in Smash? And the Halo account replied with a with an image of Master Chief. Um, so that that happened. Uh, but but yeah. So I think character two will be June. Uh, character three. When's Evo? Uh, early August. Okay, that character three. Whether it's announced or or whether it's announced or out, then I could see like ca- character three sounds like an August September thing. Then you do another one tied to a direct in like like that's announced in like October. I don't know, and that'll be out for the holiday season. And then you have the final one comes out February. Yeah, that that'll probably be that. I I would think that seems like a decent rough outline. And they announced season two, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, if the rumors are tr- if the rumors are to be believed, season one is no character who's in an existing series represented in Smash Brothers. So you so then we do season two to get in the Gen 8 grass starter and, and Edel Echoes. Card and... Rex Rex. Yeah, probably take about that long. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah, guess there's and, a Best Buy leak. <laughs> yeah, so best so Best Buy they had a pretty rough couple of days when it came to stuff getting out that probably shouldn't have. I love best so Buy. on on Sunday night, or on Sunday, actually it was Sunday morning, they leaked the render, what seemed to be the official render for Joker and Smash. Okay, that's fine. You know, pick character art. You can probably fake that, I guess. And then Tuesday, in addition to finding Persona 5 Switch in, the, in their stock keeping system, uh, they also found Metroid Prime Trilogy and a Switch version of The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. So, I feel like The Link to the Past thing is they saw IGN's April Fool's joke. <laughs> Which, for those who don't know, is everything is coming to Switch, yeah, including Facebook off, Game of the Year edition. Yeah, they, they start off with a bunch of Zelda games, though. Um, I mean, like, the Persona 5 thing and the Metro Prime Trilogy stuff is all things that have been rumored. Um, so that that certainly seems like something that could just be like, oh, we anticipate these to be announced. The link to the past stuff is weird because one, they're literally remaking a Zelda game, and also um, Link's Awakening already has its own page in the Best Buy you, system. You can pre-order Link's Awakening for Best yeah. Buy, I believe. Uh, but with Link to the Past, like they're they're not going to do a remake of that this year. That would be insane. Because they have literally a remake of the Game Boy game that was inspired by Link to the Past. It seems not worth it. Uh, yeah. The What I'm actually thinking that is, and maybe this is crazy, um, I'm thinking physical release for Cadence of Hyrule. Because the first oh, titles that they yeah. showed oh, that yeah. was Link to the Past. And they're like, okay, we're going oh, so okay. to Link to the Past. I didn't hear that yet. And that makes a lot of sense. That maybe yeah. they like it, it could have been something where yeah they like, just got put into their database wrong, but maybe that's just supposed to be Cadence of High Rule because I would kind of assume um, even Box Boy. I, I mean Justin, uh, keep an ear out if you think about how Nintendo's last uh, their I think it's their only other Switch eShop title that's not Tetris ninety nine. Uh, Snipper Clips got a physical release. Mm-hmm. I would assume that probably Box Boy will get a physical release. I would think that Kid in some High Roll will get a physical release. Well, um, if Box Boy gets the physical release, maybe they'll give us that amiibo. If I'm amiibo. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it would be I nice if. It, but it's not fair. <clears throat> to people. If it's Cadence of Hyrule did get a physical release, it'd be nice if they threw the original game on there too, because I never played it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe oh. it might get, that might get complicated because, like, that's. I don't yeah. know. Maybe that's, that's... possible. But yeah, I think I think we're re- we maybe are reading too much into this because you know we there's a simplest explanation is simply they saw that there was like a link this something that had link to the past theming to it yeah not realizing that it was a completely unrelated game and just ran with it. But, yeah. with does Best Buy often it. have weird placeholder like this that are uh, more speculative? I don't know. I don't think no, they no. normally do. I I think they had. <clears throat> I mean, granted, part of that was probably due to the to Walmart Canada, but 
there was like Borderlands three was has been rumored to be and being announced any time for like a year now. Mm. So so I bet that they probably had something for that, even though like the additions for that game just got released today. Well, if Metroid Prime Trilogy is real, I hope there's some sort of Samus helmet I can build for the Labo. Yeah, yeah, the 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 one that's also likely to be changed because it'll be Metroid Other MHD. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact: Samus also a canonical parent in Smash Brothers. Yeah. One of like eight. Why did this come up? <laughs> uh, I, I, I saw, news. No, I think I, I I saw somebody like I saw a writer from Game Informer. Yeah, uh, okay, okay, Red. we saw the same tweet. Yeah, Emron was <laughs> like, "Here's a, I'm trying to think. Are these all the parents in Smash?" And then somebody replied, "Samus," and then <laughs> the natural reply is, "We don't talk about that." <laughs> but I suppose it is true. Samus and Zero Suit Samus both count, right? Yeah, counts for two, I guess. But anyway, I think I think if we're talking about the baby, I think it's time to wrap this up. That sounds Please, like a good yes. plan. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, plug section here, uh, patreon.com slash NWR exclusive content. Um, I, we may or may not have a first look at uh, who wants to be a Nintendo Air going on the Patreon very soon. Yes, I think it's tonight, if you wait long enough, it will be there. Yes. Or for certain lengths of tonight. Uh, or in, of course, the rough cut of the audio of this show will also be there probably within the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, of course, the mothership is NintendoWorldReport.com. News, reviews, and uh, we had something very rare this week. We had an article from James Jones um, good giving, article. giving a very well deserved pillorying to a major Switch supporter. Because really, why would you talk about a game that's been de- that you haven't talked about for three years on April Fool's Day? They also like teased an Ikaruga physical release, which I think they said they're not doing. Like, that's not as cruel as '90s arcade GP, but like, come on, Nicholas. Yeah, so that's over at NintendoWorldReport.com. Uh, you can rate, rate, review the show on iTunes. Uh, you can course on this here youtube channel youtube.com slash nwrtv like subscribe hit the notification bell because well the youtube sub box can be incredibly inconsistent about as inconsistent as best buys writers yeah <laughs> of course, uh, if you want to follow us on the socials neil is at enron 10 i am zach is at zach is at z miller 1902 oh oh geez one thing i forgot Zach, real quick, Shantae 5. Cautiously optimistic, but I hope they didn't rush it out the door. For Apple Arcade or whatever? For anything. They said it's coming this year, which worries me. Well, I mean, if they wrapped they wrapped Half Genie Hero two years ago. So, well, they two and a half years ago. Kept doing DLC, though. Yeah. Yeah. You should all listen to the latest uh, radio trivia podcast for more yeah, yeah. <clears throat> with with zach talking about half genie hero and uh some other games uh way to spoil Justin. one of the games <laughs> well, what did you expect with a zach on the show <laughs> yeah. justin of course is on twitter at king nintendo fan mm-hmm. and i am at nwr donald that's all for now thank you very much have a good night bye bye later